Hello, everyone. I talked recently about map hazards, um, and notice or no, notably the kind of lack of map hazards and competitive maps. And there is another mapping convention isn't necessarily the right word, but I'll say quirk. You know, I'll say feature. There's another map feature that is also absent from every competitive map. But I don't know if there's as good of a reason for it. And also a lot of kind of custom maps that I see do incorporate this feature and try to incorporate this feature because it is very interesting. And what am I talking about? I am talking about water. So I don't mean water in the same sense that, you know, Gully Wash, the, the call out is literally water, uh, that Gully Wash used to be flooded. <laughs> where you're just submerged and swimming around. Um, yeah, no, it's not, uh, you know, Neon Annihilator water. Although I suppose uh, what the water I'm about to talk about that would still be um, giving crits or, or what have you. No, it's not submerged amounts of water. It is just slivers, just little puddles of water. And why are puddles of water interesting? Well... In Source, water has some really weird mechanics. So as many of you do know, any amount of water at all will completely negate any fall damage. Even just a tiny little hammer unit on the floor, uh, you're just falling at max velocity, you will negate that fall damage and be totally safe. Um, and that's nice, of course. So being able to negate that uh, fall damage is quite interesting. and. Applies to every class, of course, but some classes it's more relevant than others. Um, think, namely, soldier. You're going to be bombing a lot and being able to just land in a little puddle and be safe. Oh, this was so sad. Man, that was almost a uh, medic back half. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, as a soldier, being able to avoid fall damage is really, really nice because, you know, you as a soldier, are trading your health for mobility. That's kind of the whole conceit of the class in a competitive setting. Um, and your mobility, or your health, uh, the ratio, the trade there, is not just from the rockets themselves, but also kind of expected fall damage, right? Um, and that is an element. And in some cases as well, like a soldier might shoot a rocket to cushion their fall because a gunboat's rocket would do less damage than the fall damage they're about to take. So obviously mitigating fall damage is, is, is something that uh, soldiers are interested in and being able to do so at some limited capacity where a puddle might be is really nice. And another one, of course, is medic. So a medic is a very common bomb target for really any game state, but in particular like an even uber stalemate teams will send sacks on the med and a medic's primary defensive counterplay against these sacks is one using uber and forcing the uber which is mostly what the soldier wants so if you can afford not to and if you can survive the sack and the pressure without using them of course that's the, the entire objective um so one is is just using uber but the primary defensive counterplay that a medic has when they aren't trying to uh aren't trying to use is their movement. The big one, of course, being surfing that damage. Uh, effectively rocket jumping off of the soldier's rocket, um, for, for lack of a better term. So, as a result, um, you know, you have medics flying through the air trying to surf this damage, and that fall damage, that crater damage, ends up being a pretty big consideration because, you know, a lot of medics will successfully surf and successfully milk the uber but they surf so high and take enough damage in the process that they will die to fall damage and have to force anyway um some cracked medics you'll see can route towards a wall bug to eliminate this fall damage i haven't really seen medics um work on texture bugs yet although i'm sure that's uh that might happen eventually and would be really awesome to see a med survive fall damage with the texture bug. I'm sure it's happened, but uh, it's not really something that the invite medics are, are going for. I mean, the wall bugs are rare for that matter as well. 
But anyway, <laughs> and even more niche, man, to be someday we will see a medic hit a random jump bug to avoid dropping Uber. It's going to be so unlikely and you're probably going to drop Uber a hundred times before you hit the jump bug, but that would be the sickest thing ever. Um, anyway, though, obviously fall damage is a big issue for medics when they're getting bombed and have to surf that, those rockets away and being able to route to, you know, some random puddle that's on the point or, you know, the point not being the capture point literally, but the point at large, um, as in the entire area encompassing the point and the hold and fight that happens on it. But being able to route to a puddle or something is very similar to just a slanted wall that they can wall bug on and would pose a uh, unique kind of cushion there. So the fall damage mitigating properties of water definitely has some gameplay implications and that could be quite interesting in a competitive setting um but the fall damage is not the only consideration here and that's actually not even the primary consideration for the maps that experiment with uh puddles of water and for those jumpers out there, you already know what I'm talking about, and that is the fact that thin water, or just shallow water, your rocket jumps send you much, much further. I don't know the actual mechanics behind it, if the, uh, obviously the depth of the water matters somewhat, but I don't know if there's varying degrees of strength based on the depth, um, or you know, how much stronger it is. I don't think it's quite as strong as, like, a sink would be, so it's not twice as strong, but uh, definitely close. Uh, so, yeah, if there's any any jumpers in the comments who want to elucidate on the, the actual specifics here, I'd be happy to, to pin your comment. But um, a soldier jumping in water. Oh, and another thing I don't... I don't know if C-taps function in water or if it's a certain depth. Again, uh, any jumpers, please let me know. But thin amounts of water make your rocket jumps way, way stronger to the point where you almost don't even need a wall to use another rocket on for a high bomb. You can just high bomb off of the ground, off of this puddle. And oddly enough, an old version of Process does have like puddles of water on second, and you can do some insane bombs from it. Um, and that has since been kind of just... I mean, this is a forever ago version of process. Um, that uh, if you ever wonder why sewer was called sewer, you know, this version will show you why, because it is sewer doors um, that uh, that access it. Neat um, concept, and maybe uh, I, I go and look at that actually for a video or something. But anyway, um, there, there are actual maps that have had water, and again, as I've, I've talked about, um, you know, new experimental maps also like to experiment with water because the potential for just supersonic soldier bombs is interesting. Uh, and soldier bombs, of course, are the sort of primary, uh, fuel is not necessarily the right word, but, uh, primary driving force of a, of an offensive team's aggression. Um, you know, soldier bombs are what are, you know, closing gaps, creating space, uh, trying to catch players, doing a lot of damage in the process. And again, yeah, teams that are trying to advance forward and teams that are trying to aggress almost always use soldier bombs as a means to do so. So by enabling more aggressive bombs more easily, you are, um, uh, making, uh, you know, much more aggressive possibilities, uh, I shouldn't have said possibilities, much more aggressive options possible, which is interesting. Now, of course, why are water jumps not a, a staple of competitive maps, or why just are they not even in a single one that is actively played? And this I don't have as strong of an answer for, but there, of course, are a couple of reasons. I mean, first and foremost, um, it can be difficult. Obviously, like, you have to have a lot of considerations for where you would put a puddle at for it to not only be um, kind of seamless and kind of and make sense considering the map, 
Um, you know, a map like Reckoner, actually, you could totally get away with just like a pool of water somewhere. It would fit right in with the actual aesthetic style of the map. Um, but of course, you want it to be... It, you want it to look like it belongs and feel like it belongs. But also, you want it to be um, healthy from a gameplay standpoint. Because, you know, if we bring up the example of a the water puddle on Process Second, which was basically in front of Choke that... You know, as the uh, the ground dips down in front of Choke, it was basically just there. Um, you have to consider what are the gameplay implications. What kind of bombs does that enable? It's primarily... I mean, you could be bombing through Choke with it. It's going to be kind of difficult. So there's maybe potential for a strong counter-sack bomb. Um, I think the primary use, though, would be like bombing forwards into bats. Um, so then you have to consider, like, okay, is this balanced, right? Is uh, enabling these kinds of bombs in these situations something that this map benefits from or wants? Um, so those are two big uh, limiting factors, of course, is you know, the balance consideration and just kind of making it work can be quite difficult. But that's not from a lack of trying, and you do see on plenty of maps water is included and in some cases especially in the case of like really old maps like a process uh, or super old process version as well i mean process itself the current version is, is plenty old but uh you know in these cases you it's oftentimes included because just strictly for the uh, aesthetic value there was really no consideration for for water jump capabilities um and I don't even know if water jumps were well understood or thought about way back in like 2009 or something like that. But anyway, um, yeah, it's mostly there because it kind of suits the map and looks good. Um, but still nowadays, I mean, there's plenty of, um, you know, when people experiment with new maps or like look at old maps and, and whatnot, something that gets brought up a lot are water jumps. And it's not the case of like map hazards with like death pits and whatnot, where it is generally speaking... Um, frowned upon or like people just aren't really interested to play with them um in the case of water jumps a lot of people are really intrigued by them not necessarily thinking that uh they are something that um is just good right or something that uh we would benefit from that we're lacking but more so like that is a really interesting idea and interesting mechanic that enables interesting gameplay so i kind of want to just think about and maybe like try it right uh, so there's a lot of kind of, at a basic level, some some trying going on, but uh, nothing's really materialized as far as water jumping is concerned and water on maps in general. So yeah, interesting case. I would love to see water incorporated on some uh, maps because it is really cool being able to mitigate that fall damage, uh, being able to have those supercharged soldier bombs, um, both of those things not only reward um, like skill and gameplay, but also um, knowledge and map knowledge specifically, which is another important skill. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope it was interesting hearing me talk about water for you know, just about 14 minutes. And I will see you guys next time.